All right. Okay. So today we're going to talk about three things. There's three s sections to my talk. So we're going to talk about D-Trace. That's kind of important because my, my new tool that I'm going to introduce today, which took five years to write, not just off and on, five years to write. Um, and I, I actually am building ports off of it now. So D-Watch is going to make your life easier if you want to use D-Trace. And we have ports which will give you additional functionality, which is just amazing. So let's get into it. So um, on the topic of D-Trace, I'm going to, uh, most importantly, it's got a mascot. Um, what can it do? A brief history, and then we're going to get right into the thick of using D-Trace. So this is the mascot. It's <laughs> D-Trace solves so many problems. It's like getting a pony and a unicorn. And, well, you can do flame graphs. This is what most people think of when they think of D-Trace. Um, but I'm going to show you, you can do more. So we have a GORSE visualization. GORSE is a visualizer written by Andrew Caldwell. It's open source. It's in GitHub. And it takes version control logs or a custom log format, which I'm abusing in order to do much more than just version control logs. And it's wonderful. You'll get a live demo. We can trap arguments, syscalls, and functions, and do so much more with D-Trace. And of course, we can snoop on all the things, even our slides. For those who don't know, famous rapper. So Solaris 10 is when D-Trace was born. You know, we were not the first to adopt it. We did not invent it. And we will not be the last to adopt it. Right there in the middle, 2009, FreeBSD 7.1. I think everybody in this room has at least one FreeBSD system that has D-Trace installed in the base, ready to go, unless you like running things older than 7.1. And the co-creator of D-Trace has these little bullet points to share. It has its own language. It's a subset of C. And it's kind of awk-like. It has a micro virtual machine. Code is actually compiled. The D language is compiled. And it has a conservative pro point selection. And in the next slides, you're going to see what conservative means. Essentially, it means you have to be explicit. You have to tell it what you want. It won't figure it out for you. So before you use D-Trace, you have to know what a probe is. That's the most important thing about D-Trace. What is a probe? And this is the simplest D-Trace syntax you can possibly use that actually produces meaningful results. Arguably, meaningful is interpreted differently. It's not until you get into an intermediate, an advanced, an expert D-Trace syntax, which still we are in the realm of a one-liner. We haven't even gone into writing a script yet, that I have to kind of break you in. So a probe is a colon-separated string. And it represents a kernel or user land point to trace. You can trace one, more, or any number. And so it's separated by the provider, the module, the function, and the name. Providers at the top level, providers provide modules. Modules provide functions, and functions provide names. It's not always the case. Sometimes you have a provider that doesn't actually have any sub-modules or functions, just names. But at the top level, it's all providers. There's 26. Get to know them. So now we have dtrace-n, a valid probe. This valid probe says, watch, me, watch all of the VFS create events. Now, arguably, you don't get much information. This is almost practically worthless, this very basic syntax. All you get is you get the CPU that the probe fires on, the ID, which is uh, shorthand. So notice that you only get the function and the name. If you want the provider and module, you can use the ID. You can say dtrace-li, the ID, and it will show you the exact full probe. And if you break it down, there is actually a couple probes that you can use to say all probes. And that is colon, or colon, 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 colon. Now, I'm doing something in these slides that you might want to key in on, which is that every time something is a provider, it's red. Every time something is a module, it's blue. And every time something is a function, it's green. And every time it's a name, it's purple. So not every 
output is colorized in the way that you see it on my slides. I'm trying to help you parse these walls of text. And within a probe, you can actually just omit an entry between colons to say, wildcard, I want all of those things. So the, this first example would be, I want all of the VFS VOP creates. Well, that, that, that's only one. So this is really just like shorthand because I'm too lazy to type VOP. And you can say star. But you probably don't want to say star if you are only putting a star because then you have to uh, quote it. Because what if your shell finds a file name matching that pattern and expands it? Um, you can also put the star anywhere in there to mean all attributes, all reads, all writes, whatever. So here's that in use. Show me all of the functions in the VFS provider as I enter them. I want to see what functions I, I'm hitting. Again, this is arguably not really that helpful because all I'm getting is a CPU that the probe fires on, the ID of the probe, the function name, and the entry. But we're getting closer to something usable. And now an example on multiple probes, you just separate them with a comma. So not only can you have wildcards, patterns, you can have multiple probes that select different things separated by commas. And so the very bottom one there, if I say VFS colon 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 comma syscall colon colon colon, why would I do that? I want to see the VFS and the syscalls interleaved. That's 2,324 probes. So that's what this looks like. So now um, the first one, ioctal, that's a syscall. Lookup, that's a VFS. Vop lookup, uh, lock one, that's in the VFS provider. And ioctal, of course, is a syscall. So here you can actually see how they are fire in order, which is nice. Although, pay attention to the CPU. OK, so the next thing I break you into is there's not just dash n. Almost every one-liner you find on the internet is going to have dash n probe. You don't have to limit yourself to dash n probe and a, and a four tuple separated by three colons. You can actually have what it allows is three tuples and less. Imagine only specifying two, two colons. Imagine not having any colons. Wouldn't that be nice? Dtrace allows it. So if you say traditionally dash n name, it will take a four tuple. But it will also take a name. Dash n tick is actually equivalent to dash n colon 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 tick. Dash n proc colon 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 create comma on CPU. It knows that the first one is fully qualified. The last one is not. And so internally, it will translate this to proc colon 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 create comma colon 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 on CPU. There's other examples, like if you want to watch the function named log, Dash F log is synonymous with dash N colon colon log colon, that selector. There's dash M for watching a whole module. There's dash P for watching a whole provider. So if I want to watch all the ZFS functions, just carte blanche. And I don't care what the provider is. Here it is, dash M ZFS. So now I, CPU, ID, function, and name. So some good functions here. Arc available memory, none, arc adjust, multi-list, get random index, SPA, get random, good stuff. So then you might be interested to then ask Dtrace to show you the probes, because maybe you don't want to sit there and wait for it to fire. So if you just say dash LN colon, you'll get all the probes, 64,000 plus. It depends on the OS you're on. We are always adding new ones. We have an army of FreeBC developers constantly adding new probes. And also there are some dynamically um, generated probes off of um, unstable providers like the function boundary tracer, which we have a function for every function in the kernel. So if you say dash LP syscall, you'll see all the probes under the syscall provider. I've truncated the middle here, but you can see it starts off with syscall FreeBSD32. There's actually two modules here. There's a FreeBSD32 if you want to watch the 32-bit entries or the 64. But if you want to watch both, just put the colons together and say, I want to watch syscall colon colon, whatever it is you're looking for, if you want to watch both 32 and 64. Earlier, I had mentioned that 
for example, like when you get an output and you're not sure what the provider in the module was, you can use that ID. It's not worthless. Ask dtrace to list that by ID. Oh, okay, so that was VFS, VOP, VOP is locked entry. So now, the next thing you learn is actions. Because isn't it more useful to actually ask dtrace to emit something more than just that bare bones information? So this looks like that. And you have to be careful is that the probe and the action have to be a single argv element passed to dtrace. And so here, I'm going to mention to you that earlier, we weren't passing an action. There's a default action. Much like awk has a default action of printing the line if you don't put, put any curlies. Um, dtrace, on the other hand, its default action is to print four globals. And you do need the curlies all the time if you're going to, what's that? that statement was actually, the curlies in awk, for example, if you're familiar with awk, if you put curlies that are empty, there's no action executed for the line. This is um, unlike dtrace, where the stuff in the curlies is actually augmented, not replacing. So when you ask for additional things in an action bounded by curlies, given a probe or multiple probes, similarly by commas, you can ask for these default things plus the things you ask for. There's a dash Q flag, which I'm not even going to cover. It's not worth it. It's just 10 second blurb here. Dash Q will, oh, will not print those four globals. And then you have full control over what's printed. But here's all the globals that you don't get that you could ask for. There's a little teaser here. It's like, so yeah, the probe provider, the probe module, the executable name, the timestamp, the wall timestamp, the PID, UID, GID, and recently we added JID, the thread ID, and the best one, cur thread, which has everything you would ever want. And so here, let's use an action. So when I hit any syscall, entry or return, print the executable name. So here, um, again, just a reminder, they're not really colored purple and green on your terminal. It's just for you. Um, this is all black text. But here we get dtrace, turn server, which is co-turn, stuff like that. So we're getting closer to something that's usable. And the previously mentioned dash f, which turns on flow indent, allows you to see an incrementing and decrementing um, stack. But you only get the function when you turn on dash f. The default action is to print only two globals, CPU and function. But here we've given it an action to say print the thread name. All right, so in ZIO root, we're going to do a trim. And we're still doing that trim all the way through the list create. So now we have to introduce the verbose listing, which, yeah, it's great to be able to ask for some of these globals. But how about some specific information that's actually unique to that probe? How do you know what is available via arguments for the probe? dtrace dash lv and the probe, whether it be function vop is locked or a full um, four tuple quad with a dash n. Of course, I've truncated my get up because that's what I like to do. And I've given you a little recipe here that, yeah, the output is longer. I really only want to zero in on the args uh, just so I can fit it all on one side. So vop is locked entry has a v node and this opaque args list. The return, again, has the same v node, and, which may have changed, just a minor note. And vop is locked args, opaque, and an int, which is probably the return. So cross-reference, actually, I don't know. The just get that. OK, so cross-reference with the man page. So here I'm going to walk you over the next two slides, actually extracting information from kill2, man2kill. So to put this all together, to bring it home, Ask dtrace what the args are. It tells you that syscall colon freebsd colon kill colon entry, that probe, just mentally put it together in your mind, gives you an integer for arg0 and an integer for arg1. Now, according to the man page, that's a PID and a signal. And that's kind of cute, too, is that you are now revealed that a PID T is an int. 
and of course an int is an int. So now, with an action, uh, just a probe and an action, we're going to print the PID and the signal. And so here, I didn't pass dash Q, so I get the four regular globals and the information I asked for. PID and signal. Side note, what's a negative PID? A PID grouping. So predicates, aka test conditions. This is your final education on the syntax, which is it's probe conditionally slash D trace code slash, which is a condition that when is true, will execute the actions. So now the actions only when you want them. So the next step, let's give us ourselves a very simple example. Here I'm going to watch prop colon 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 exec, which fires every time a program is executed, whether successfully or not. If the executable name is bash, print the PID that was forked. And now this arguably isn't that very use useful because I'm, what am I going to do with a CPU, an ID, a function name, and the word fork and a PID? That's, we're going to watch, take this and make it much nicer. So let's review. In dtrace, we have a probe type, most commonly dash n. Then in a single argv probe, that's non-negotiable. Optionally tests and optionally actions. You do need the curlies, whether you have an action or not. Um, if you're going to do anything more than just probe. So like if you put a white space, it will balk at you. So now dwatch. It too has a mascot. <laughs> and I'll tell you about it. And I'm not egotistical. It does not solve every single problem. There are some things that dwatch you don't use it for, that you still go to dtrace for. And we'll cover that. And then we'll cover probes, actions, and predicates, and profiles, because it does it differently. And profiles is the meat. That's what you want to see. That's why you're here. So this is my mascot for um, dwatch. And it's a, a younger um, pony corn. And she's got a magnifying glass, and she's looking at D-Trace. Um, it allows her to see D-Trace better. And she's got some Sherlock accessories, because she's, she's really into um, sleuthing out and stuff. So today, everything you see me presenting, right now, if you have RC1 installed, you have D-Watch. Ready to go. It's out there. And June 22nd, we're going to have it in 11.2 dash release. And if you have 12.0 current, that's June 1st or later, you have everything you need to do everything you see in my slides and demos here today. You can even follow along. So what exactly, what precisely is DWatch? It's a D-Trace wrapper. It has intelligent probe point selection to make that much easier. You get new globals you can ask for, although most of the time it just gives it to you. Default action displays are different. It's not just CPU ID, function, and name. It's much more. And we have profiles for selecting information out of probes to get that specific information that you don't get anywhere else globally. Like, if I'm watching prop colon 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 exec, I ought to be able to see specific information about the execution of that process. And of course, I maybe contentiously, integrate sudo so you don't actually have to use it. And what do we do differently? It's not a single argv for probe, test, and predicate. I separate them. There's a flag for the test, and you can replete it multiple times. There's a flag for the action, and you can have multiple actions. And that is paired up with the probe selector so that you can actually have logic behind the scenes doing much more combined with your custom action. And something that dtrace could never ever think of doing, dwatch allows you to filter on regex for most everything. And this is a, a huge advantage. I don't want to see all the events. Perhaps I want to see just the ones matching a particular regex. And the D language is pared down. You can't do regex in um, D. But if you're smarmy, you might actually use 
string char or string string in order to maybe do some of the more um, basic pattern matching like FN match does. Regex is more powerful than that. So what I do not do well, I don't really do too well, and this is not my fault, it's actually a bug in Dtrace, is if Dtrace is not the foreground running application, a particular feature called aggregations in Dtrace will not fire when the application exits. So normally a Dtrace aggregation is to not print information as the probe fires, but to silently collect information in memory, and when I control C, dump out either a histogram or a distribution. And that's really, really useful, but it doesn't work unless Dtrace is the foreground application from my personal testing. Even making it the non-foreground application and emulating a control C with a, with a signal 2, it just does not emit the information. So that's one thing I don't do. But I give you a backdoor. There is a backdoor if you really need that. And the value add is that you then see the real-time information flowing into the aggregation, and then when you actually exit, you see that information too. So it's not just a black hole sitting there staring you in the face saying, nothing, and then control C, everything. So that would be an advantage of using DWatch for an aggregation in this um, very weird, uh, non-optimal situation. Let's, let's not focus on aggregations then. So probes, notice it's much simpler. I try to make it so that DWatch, if you don't even want to, I'm sorry, you're going to be forced to learn how Dtrace works. So if you sit down and spend a day with DWatch, you're actually 50% of the way to learning Dtrace. And I make the DWatch probe type optional. How can I possibly do that? And why would I possibly want to do that? If you sit down and analyze probe, uh, providers, modules, functions, and names, and just treat it as a list of words, and then throw away the category, ask yourself how many of those words are unique. 99.95% .95 of all words in Dtrace, as of 11.0-release-p1, were unique. There's only a seven, there are only 17 words that overlap to a 0.05%. And I'll show you what they are, just for enumeration. There is an overlap between providers and functions. The word FBT is both a provider and a function in, in the DT malloc provider. The word PROC is both a provider, e.g. PROC colon kernel colon colon, or it's a function in DT malloc. I have a very slick algorithm that actually figures out what you most likely meant, and that is to watch the greedy one. Watch the one that matches more probes. If you get the wrong one, use the flag to specifically say which one you wanted. So now dwatch is essentially, I, I do like, I, you can give me a, dot, uh, a four tuple with three colons or less all day long. I'll, I'll take it. But if you give me a single word with no colons, that's the magic. That's only where my algorithm is applied, to, uh, to intelligently select the probe for you. There's a little overlap for module and function category. There's only three there. Like name i is both a module in the VFS provider and a function in the function boundary tracing provider. And then there's nine in the function name overlap. So the default actions for dwatch are different. You get more info. I've been talking about that. This is what you get. You get the wall timestamp in four-digit year, three-character month, uh, two-digit day, optional leading space, and uh, what is, oh, T, um, H, H, M, M, S, S, separated by colons. And that's going to match your date when you run date. It's going to match exactly. Well, if you were to give it this format. You also get the UID, the GID, the exec name, and the PID, and I plumb cur thread for you, so you don't have to. Oh, that's, that's hundreds of lines of dtrace to plumb cur thread. It's absolutely disgusting. You want me to do it for you. So now here is, is an example of a two-word invocation. We saw me watching, using, watching vop create with dtrace earlier. Now let's watch vop create with dwatch. Date and time, that actually is colored green, um, although I've, that's synthetic, the vfs red and the vop blue, and the, yeah, that's synthetic. But 
Yeah, I do have ANSI coloring on my output to separate the date and time from the data. Visual separator. So here we see, uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually UID 604, that's me. I'm doing the touch. I, I say touch foo and, and touch bar and, and the op create catches it. Although, we'll see a better invocation that actually tells you what was touched, the full VFS path. And that'll be when we get to profiles. But right now, let's keep looking at the default actions. You've seen the default action with just a probe adding dash F, which would normally turn on flow indent and D-trace, is a simulation that emits the precise probe for tuple that you can copy and paste should you want to zero in and dive deeper and only zero in on that one probe. And that looks like this. The one thing you don't get, though, is you don't actually get space indentation for a stack it's just going to tell you, oh, I'm entering proc kernel constructor. I'm leaving proc kernel constructor. I'm now in proc kernel none create, et cetera. Okay. And this is cool. A dash capital R will enable a miniature process tree. So here, um, I've said watch exec VE so that I can watch processes being executed in real time. So this SSHD for the first block, there's two blocks on the screen right here. The first block is an SSHD PID 18434 just exec VE bash, which has actually the parent process of SSHD, which has another parent process of SSHD, which has a parent process of the master SSHD accepting incoming connections on port 22. And then the next block is of course me running uname inside that forked bash, that exec bash. I don't print all the globals that DTrace has either. You don't get CPU ID, TID, or JID from my default action, but you can ask for it. And now it's actions and predicates for DWatch. Actions are actually put into dash capital E, and tests are put into dash T, and they can be specified multiple times. So here we're going to say, when I hit kill, I'm going to like before, but using dwatch this time, print the PID and the signal. And this is not the final end goal. This gets easier too. Dash T example would be watch exec VE where the caller is bash. Now I'm hinting at the new globals. Yeah, caller exec name is one of those. So now we get to the best part about all of this, profiles. It's a way of having a canned solution in DTrace. Write it once, never look back. But you can override the action, and you can override the test, and you can override the probe. The profile is the logic for collecting the information. You can ask for what's displayed. There is a default for what's displayed for each profile. So it's really the automation process that a profile for DWatch means you don't have to know the probe, which it can watch, a pro profile can watch multiple probes. You don't have to know how to collect the data into clause, thread, or, or whatever globals, clause locals, self locals, or globals. I'm using terminology that DTrace people will pick up on, but I can educate later. We just don't have the time for that. There are 81 profiles in DWatch, and I'll show you what those focus on. 11 of those are for proc, and that's holistic, that's, that's whole, that's everything you need. That's all that the provider gives you. Well, actually, there's some constructor, destructor ones I haven't done yet. I actually have to be educated on those because those aren't in the man page. So what I essentially did was I, I said ls slash user slash share slash man slash man for slash dtrace star. And there are man pages for dtrace probes. dtrace proc, dtrace underscore proc. If you say man dtrace underscore proc, you'll actually get a description of each probe, what arguments it has, and what you can expect inside those structs that you're passed. I have 18 profiles for watching syscalls. I have 22 for watching networking, which covers IP, UDP, and TCP. I have nine for watching the VFS layer. 
I have 18 for watching the CPU scheduler. I really wanted to spend a lot of time on those because people have been saying that FreeBSD's scheduler needs some improvements. I'm like, all right, let me give you some observability. Let's test those theories of yours. There are three profiles for disk I.O. And now, at 81 profiles, it's get a little unwieldy, so I've given you a way of searching for them. So dash Q, R, this is, can take regex, show me all of the profiles where I can watch a VFS operation. And that previous example, which I promised would get better, has gotten better. Do you watch dash X kill to run the kill profile? There's all the information you needed. You do not have to provide an action. You do not have to provide the probe. You do not have to provide anything. Just give me the name of the canned solution. Now here we could say, I want the canned solution for open, which dwatch, the first three lines you'll see here are informational, tells you I'm sourcing the profile called open. I found it in user libexec dwatch. The probe that it wants to watch is syscall colon colon open colon entry and syscall colon colon open at colon entry. When either one of those is fired and the program name is not sendmail because I happen to have been getting a lot of noise from sendmail when I was watching open at the time when I was making this slide, I said let's ignore sendmail. All right, show me all the opens that are not sendmail. There it is. And we see the path that was opened. So here, let's look at VOP lookup. Not, I'm no longer just getting random globals from hitting that probe. The profile actually knows how to extract the path from the vnode argument without a walk, without a transitive pass through nameI. If you want a lesson in how to walk a vnode, <laughs> come talk to me after this. Oh, and of course, let's apply some regex to that. So I only get events where the path had slash foo slash in it. And it does actually ANSI highlight it for you too on the, current, on the command line. If you don't want that ANSI highlighting, you can always turn it off by piping it into cat or making it look like standard out is not a terminal. So let's talk about ports. I have two ports. The first one I'm not really sure I should have done. The second one is really, really useful for, I think, everybody. You can visualize your process accounting. You can visualize system calls. You can visualize the file system access in real time and networking in real time. And installing those ports gives you more profiles. That's why I said 81 plus, because if you install some ports, you got more than 81, which is the count in base. So I'm going to give you a demo. And this slide is left blank, so I can give you a demo. GORS is a software that you can install with brew. You ins execute brew install GORS. OK, then once that's installed, you have GORS. GORS itself is not useful unless you feed it. To feed it, you need to give it either a version control log, which is its, <coughs> that's its modus operandi. That's how it wants to be used. I'm not using it for what it wants to be used for. It usually is used for, like, say, I don't know, the 20, any, 20 year anniversary um, video that I made. As a reminder. This video, which we played at the 20th anniversary party in uh, DNA Lounge in San Francisco. So this is Gorse's normal use case. Take a version control log from subversion, git, mercurial, perforce, whatever, and render the users committing on the tree. I'm going to use it to render process accounting information. So the first thing you need to do is, well, you've installed, you've gone to a, um, a system and installed the port.
So I have all of them installed. Um, that 1.4 D watches, ignore that. D watches in head now, and base, and 11. So I have additional profiles, but I actually made it super, super easy to do these renderings because I was having a hard time getting Gorse to run in X11 on the FreeBSD box. So I actually SSH into the box, remotely start dtrace, which funnels all the information back to my Mac into Gorse. I can also just stash the log, copy it over later, and do the rendering that way. But I'm going to show it to you in real time, because that's more effective. There's a tool called um, GWatch installed by this port. We're going to SCP that back to the Mac. It has a syntax where it wants to take a host, or dash L if you really do have Gorse installed on your FreeBSD box and want to do a local rendering. Not much, without much more ado. Here we are in real time, rendering essentially PS, but it's still going in real time. So as I move this aside, I don't even actually have to SSH into it. We have Chef running on this box, so there will be activity maybe during this conference, I mean during this talk. Now bear with me, I have a an insanely intense bash profile. So this will kick off a lot. OK, so here's a sleep 20. Oh, wait, I, let me turn off my rainbow colors, because that will convolute the graph. There's a bash, and, a, and it has a sleep. And I can see that it goes kernel init sshd sshd bash sleep. And is it about to die? Still there? Any second now? There it goes. Removed. It's gone. Dead. Let's have some fun. There's a bunch of sleeps. And after 10 seconds, they will die. We'll have a funeral for them. <laughs> OK, so this is process accounting. It too has a dash Q, and it's telling me you can say net proc VFS open or syscall. And that's querying the remote machine for which profiles are installed on it that match Gorse. This is system, system calls in real time. So the application, you can see which system calls an application is using. I can filter on this information to say I only want to see SSHD or I only want to see two system calls, mmap and munmap. The possibilities are limitless. Networking is fun. Isn't it? Isn't that just, just general statement? Networking is fun. I have three connections. OK, so we have uh, one connection from my laptop on TCP with a client, um, a client port 
of 50429, the endpoint, of course, is 22. This SSHD is firing dtrace data at me for the visualization. There was a host. Uh, let me pause it. Let me zoom in. What is that? That's a SSHD host. I can hit tab. Um, NTPD. All right, let me resume. All right, zoom back out. This is interactive. You can do debugging with this. So now, this is when I learned something very scary. I learned that W actually hits my DNS server to look up an address, uh, an address's PTR record. And so I was like, what, what, what is W doing here? So right, so I was quite, quite shocked to find out that it was actually doing any UDP traffic at all. So now this is actually now my favorite tool for testing UDP traffic. Control-C. Okay. It'll take a while for them to quiesce. <laughs> We're getting to a point, though, where I will visualize every um, protocol family. And we'll have, uh, I, right now, the visualizer actually has UDP and TCP. Um, ultimately, I would like to also add SCTP. And if we invent more protocol families, I'd like to get those in there, too, because I, I like having multifamily visualizations. I really like doing it in base, though, like right out the box. It'd be like, okay, even on boot with no packages installed, it'd be cool. Um, wait, well, TCP dump is in base, right? Yeah. All right, they're coming. They're, they're meandering away. <laughs> and the, uh, the visualizer will catch up and become performant again. There it goes. Yeah, okay. There it goes. The VFS one is nice. I have some fun things I can do here, too, like run find. So these are all the files that are being touched just by me logging into the box. That includes libraries, binaries, um, files that are just straight up opened. Um, Fine. Let's see. Don't don't kill the system. <laughs> I, I I created a um, a subdirectory structure in slash temp with a billion subdirectories. Yeah, my rendering was going for a while. It was like hours. So I'm not going to do it on temp, on slash temp. So there's a there's everything in var log. Let me just pause that so it stays up there for a while. So, like, there's libruby, which is an user local lib. There's enkdb, which has that path. libmap.d. All these are file systems that were touched in some way. Now, I'm watching, actually, multiple probes, and dwatch tells me what it's watching. Uh, oh, actually, this one's just vupcreate. Is it? No, that's the profile name. What am I? Oh, there's the list of probes. I'm watching create, lookup, make dir, make nod, remove, and rmdir and symlink. Let's see. Back to slides. So I've actually got some videos. Yeah, the, the live demos are fun. But when you can package your demonstration for an audience, that's so much more fun, I think. So this is the one that I want to show you. At the end, you're going to get a link to my slides. You can watch the rest. Let me pause that for a second. What are we, do what are we looking at here? 
my visual my visualizer and dtrace code is so spot on i can run it during a build world and capture the entire build world and play it as a movie and then repeat the same process with a dash j8 and then in iMovie put the videos together time sync them so that they start and end at the same amount of time which is three minutes and 37 seconds so i've actually radically compress the video because a build world is hours. Run them side by side to see how they actually compare. Now you'll notice in the top left we have a key. Uh, let me stop moving the mouse so that those accoutrement go away. Yes, okay. There are 400 C++ invocations, not concurrently, the visualizer has a three second delta from when a node appears to when it actually kills it. So to its mind, it thinks that there are 400 C++ instances. It's more serial than that. What we find is that the single threaded and the multi-threaded build world actually is largely the same for a good chunk of the time. And that's due to cleaning objectors at the beginning. And so now let me fast forward here. And we're going to see a huge divergence. The bottom is still ramping up, and here it goes. 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 29,000 shell instances, and comparably some number of makes and subchildren. The top one only got up to about 12,000. And it's not on linear scale. You may say dash J8, but you're not going to get an eight times multiplier because there are limits to your CPU setup, your hardware, context switching, and um, all sorts of complexity. And at the very end, here's the breakdown. The single threaded build world ran in four hours and 40 minutes. The dash J8 multi-threaded build finished in one hour and four minutes. It definitely was more intense. There are eight branch points right in here doing the same work you see off here, this node here. Right, so visualizations are very powerful for understanding what your system is doing and what's going on. I'm going to go back to slides. Is it here? Yes. All right. And I have to give a lot of thanks. The mascot was actually um, written by my spouse, um, drawn by my spouse, by hand. And then I said, hey, let's vectorize that to the Twitter community. And within seconds, somebody was like, hey, let's run this through dimensions or whatever it was, um, some path tracing program. And we got a really nice vectorized mascot. And then, of course, this, all this stuff you're seeing here spent 364 days in Fabricator. I rewrote it three times. And that 364 days in Fabricator was preceded by four years of development. And it was reviewed by George Neville Neal, Mark J, and B. Drury. And I have to thank everybody here, because I know you're going to use it. And I have to thank you all for sitting here. And so we have a questions section segment. And while I have this slide up, feel free to take down that URL. The underlined portion is really the bare minimum you need to get to the slides. You can navigate the rest of your way. It's just a directory listing. So, do I have any questions? I'll take that as a sign. Yes. Yes. So I the Q the dash Q is quiet. Capital Q? Uh, one of the Qs was a filter out output, correct? D trace or D watch? Well, potentially both, but looking at D watch, can one follow a TXE negotiation to filter out the giant Absolutely. So if you wanted to watch TFTP from a network point of view, you would do this. Did 
It's TCP, right? Yeah. No, wait. So let's let me just get right. It's both. No. <laughs> Due to the spec, right? Right. My profile for watching UDP traffic stashes all the information that you need into clause local variables, which are accessible to a predicate. So here, if I say, now I'm not going to use TFTP because I have no way of making it fire on this box. I'll watch something I can see. DNS. Right, DNS. Okay, so here we have SSHD port 22, port 22? No, nope, that's a 53, there you go, 53, there's your 53, and 140 bytes, 53 bytes in, out, 140 bytes back, um, 53, 53, okay. It would be really nice if I could actually see more than that, um, I'm not sure what I would do, but because when I put a clause of show me, um, DNS, it's just going to show me exactly what we just had. So it should essentially just be a no-op. No. Our port, 53. Our favorite animal, <laughs> W. <laughs> so here we are. That's no other port but remote port 53. Um, what was the, what was it? <laughs> 69. Yeah, so 69 would be your answer. Yeah. I'll just leave that up on the screen for a little bit if anybody wants to, like, take, make a note for themselves. Any other, other more questions? If you don't ask questions, I'm going to assume you're all experts now. So we'll have like a hallway track where we're just like totally like expert talking about D-Trace, right? Question. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Just felt like so. <laughs> yeah, no worries. We're not done yet. So if we don't have any enough questions to fill out our time slot, which is still four minutes. I can't believe I did 97. Well. There's a couple more slides. I didn't think I was going to get this far. I get this question a lot. How is D-Trace doing against its competitors? Completely subjective. My opinion alone. Every time something notable has happened in any one of the camps, I'm going to bump that Y value up on a graph. Now I'm going to layer them. Let's just see what happens. If we can say this is maturity, then D-Trace is much more mature than the other technologies. And so I've just made some call-outs here. Having a book, being ported to a new OS, having a new tool written against it, which is holistically access, you know, making the, its underpinnings easier, like D-Watch. Um, look at D-Trace in the back. Um, F-Trace is pretty old in Linux. Uh, System Tap is getting to be kind of old. Um, eBPF didn't make the graph. Um, it's still, I think, kind of nascent for me because I don't have an, enough uh, ability to play with it in production. Um, and I'm kind of limited to production. I, I have CentOS 7.5 at work. We don't like kind of like take forays into head or anything like that in Linux land. I do that in FreeBSD all the time now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the last slide. Uh, I've done many things in FreeBSD. I'm kind of proud of this one. Gandhi.net, is, who's an internet domain registrar, um, made this logo as a mashup. They made many mashups, you know, but they did a FreeBSD mashup. And they, they mentioned on Twitter that they use FreeBSD a lot. And so I thought I'd return the favor. And so I made them a boot ASCII art. And it's still in use today. And people that work there have no idea I made it. 
And so that's my talk. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>